I have a uh, two personal beliefs, which are some part of the points I'll share with you. One is that yes, you can uh, pick up a book and you can read the theory. But the question is, where does theory come from? Let, let's say a theory of success, or we are talking of theory of relativity, or we are talking of gravity, or we are talking about uh, price sensitivity. These theories, where do they come from? Uh, anyone? What's the genesis of any theory in life, in science? Price sensitivity or demand, sorry? Empirical studies. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's what happens in real life. So you observe and you conceptualize and then you say, oh, when the prices go up, demand falls. So you give it a name, a price uh, sensitivity or price elasticity. So the biggest point I'm making is that all the theories that we see, science or management or engineering, are have their roots in real life, in practice, what happens, what we observe, what we see, we conceptualize. And similarly with success. So let, let's see if we can uh, try and conceptualize and, and make some theories out of what happens. There have been a lot of people, organizations, agencies who have interviewed uh, the most successful people in the world. You, you can Google it. You can go online and you say, what did Steve Jobs say? Uh, what did Bill Gates say? How to be successful? And I can challenge you that when you summarize it, you will always come back to the same points, the very points which Professor Sharma actually mentioned right up front. And I am going to discuss the same. So I am going to state the obvious. I am not going to say anything new. But I will try to elaborate and I try to relate it with real life examples so that if possible, uh, you, you can uh, begin to see what I, uh, what I mean by those or what, what is meant when people uh, describe these concepts. So the first and foremost, and, and being successful in life, when I started my career, it was as an individual worker. So do the best you can and you can be brilliant with your, I started as a brand manager, for example. So I can be brilliant at brand strategy, I can be brilliant at implementation. But the two or three things which happened, I found that whatever strategy I come up with has to be implemented by someone else. That's critical. And the second is that very soon, very early on in my life, I became a manager. And that was the biggest learning in my life that uh, earlier it was convincing others and now it is making sure that your team is able to do what you want them to do. And that is far more difficult. So what I'm going to say helps in becoming successful as an individual, but more so helps in becoming successful as a team member and as a team leader. And those are critical as well. So the first message is uh, being positive. Now think in real life, what kind of people you like to associate with? If you want to invite a friend home, or if you want to spend time with your relatives, what kind of people you like to spend time with? People who complain? No. Or people who are positive about everything? And I'll give you an example. Suppose I hire a medical representative. And I say, you are able to make only five calls in a day. Now, there are two kinds of responses. And I've seen it all my life. One kind of response is, there's too much of traffic. Doctors are very busy. My bike did not function. And long distances between the doctors and the route planning is bad. And the second one says, let's find a solution. Maybe I can meet some in the morning, some in the evening. Maybe I can find when is the off time. Maybe I can find out what are their hobbies and what are their habits. Somebody goes for a morning walk. I can catch him there. What kind of a person would you recruit? And I can go on and on and on. And you will realize that the person you want to associate with, person you want to work with and if you become a boss, the person you want to recruit is somebody who is not part of the problem, is part of the solution. And when I was managing director at Eli Lilly, we had five values and one of the most important value in five was the attitude. Is it positive? Is it negative? And that is a critical part of being successful. So I challenge you. I challenge you. There is good in everything 
and most important there is good in everyone people you meet you can criticize or you can fight good nobody is perfect let let let's, let me share my experience 99.9% .9 of us are average people some are successful some are not that's a different issue but we are all average and, and the point is how do we become successful if you want and how did someone else become successful what can we learn from him or what can we learn from her and the first habit and i'm calling it a habit is being positive and finding something good try it when you meet a person you can criticize a person the way the person looks the way the person talks the way the person behaves <coughs> or you can ignore that and say everybody has positives and negatives let me only focus on positives and let me find something good and comment on that what do you think will happen to a relationship if you criticize a person versus if you find good in genuinely i'm not saying you should be telling lies but genuinely if you find good in a person that is something which everyone loves you want to get a job you want to make progress in your career that is a critical aspect that you need to inculcate in yourself the second one is about uh, setting a goal if you have read one of the best books i have read on this subject is stephen covey's seven habits of successful people and he very clearly says always begin with a goal in mind whatever you are doing in life you have to have a a, a target now uh, the next point is plan to reach there or take action to reach there i'm quoting now these are not mine but i'm quoting uh, from someone else that nobody plans to be lazy poor or fat nobody plans to do that it happened because you did not plan to do it otherwise you plan to be thin what would you do you would take a walk you will watch your diet and you will work towards it and and then you would be healthy and you would be fit but if you don't have a goal and you don't plan you know what's going to happen and it's a very simple real life example that i'm giving you and same thing applies in your studies and same thing applies in your workplace uh no everybody is not going to be fast i understand that but you can say i want 70% or i want 80% if you don't have that ambition you don't have that goal in mind you may say that i want to stand first or you may not you may end up second or third but if you do not have that target in mind rest assured you will it will you not even be in top five. so that's that's critical that you have a target in, in, in life in mind whatever you may be doing as a student Uh, as a career professional in business or in relationships now comes my favorite and that is the person who thinks he or she is perfect the decline of that person begins that very day people who succeed are those who have their feet on grind ground and who learn every day from everyone there's something to be learned from everybody and i can assure you as i finish and we start interacting i will learn a lot from you when i go back from you i will learn from my interaction with your uh, professors there's something to be learned every day but the day i say i am perfect i have nothing to learn that's some my decline because why does it happen it happens to individuals it happens to companies and it also happen to countries arrogance is the sure shot recipe for failure and we take example of sports people we take example of business people uh the competition never stops growing competition never stops learning so if you are not learning then you are going to be left behind it is as simple as that now uh, i missed uh, Virat Kohli's interview after the match against uh, Pakistan uh, but I was commenting upon uh, it the next day that this is what I've observed in Virat Kohli he said the same thing he said in his interview which is if you remember in during his he is is probably the best batsman we have in the country right one of the top in the world remember in England he was getting out again and again and again on the balls which were pitched outside the off stump he corrected himself he learned how to play 
the balls which were outside the house. So that he comes behind the ball and he plays them to the ground so that nobody can catch him. And he commented upon it. And he also bowed to Sachin Tendulkar when he scored his 50s. If Virat Kohli thought he was perfect, he would never improve. And if he would not improve, India would not be winning these matches, I can assure you. Same thing with Sunil Gavaskar, he used to play table tennis so that he could keep an eye on a fast moving ball. And he was one of the best players of fast balls, we know that. Uh, Tendulkar, he was practicing almost every day. So, no one can succeed unless the person is practicing and learning every day or improving every day. Because if Virat Kohli or Sachin Tendulkar or whosoever it may be does not improve, then there are ballers and there are competing cricket teams who are watching their videos and finding a weakness and trying to attack them. So, competition is always attacking you and only way to keep winning is to improve every day. And that is absolutely uh, critical. Uh, other one is very obvious, which is hard work. Uh, it has happened to me. As I said, let's start with the premise that I'm successful. So it happens in forums like this that people come up to me and say, how did you succeed? And uh, I have to smile and tell them that there is no formula. There is no shortcut. I cannot give you a simple magic bullet. You do this and you will become successful. That cannot happen. That does not happen. You look at Sachin Tendulkar, you look at Virat Kohli, but you don't see a 20 years of hard work behind that. If they had not done that, they would not be here today. So that is critical. So next one is about hard work. Now you, uh, we talk about that you don't have a goal to lose weight, you will never lose weight. You don't have a plan to lose weight, you will never lose weight. But if you don't work hard at losing weight, you will also never you have to get up early in the morning, which I think is the most difficult thing to do for each one of you. But if you do not get up early in the morning and do not take a walk every day, you are not going to do so. So it's as simple as that. So there is no formula. There is no magic there. The next one is linked to my favorite topic of learning every day. And that is analytical ability. Now I told you that one day, I got up and God blessed me that you will be successful and, and you know I never happened like that. So uh, I did well, those were not available at all. Uh, so I said I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. So how about research? So there was all India entrance exam and I went to IIT. And after my B farm, I thought I probably would like to go in sales and marketing. So I appeared for entrance exam. Uh, my dad thought that, uh, so, so no, I'm talking about, you know my age already. So I'm talking about 1977. That's when I completed my B farm. Until that time, no pharmacist had ever gone into management. No one. No one had thought of it. So I told my dad, I said, look, thanks to you, I've become a pharmacist. But I want to do management. And he thought uh, he's an idiot and pharmacists don't go for MBAs. That is stupidity and anyway this guy will never get it. So he helped me fill a form. We did not apply to IIM Ahmedabad. We applied to, did not apply to IIM Calcutta. We applied to IIM Bangalore, uh, Faculty of Management uh, Studies, Delhi University and then in the Institute of Foreign Trade. And I passed all the written exams. So he was totally shocked. He said, what happened here? And then I went. And I failed in all three group discussions and interviews, all of them, completely failed. So that was a crushing blow because I, my heart set on that. I said, okay, maybe I'm not fit to be a manager. I'll become a technical person. I did my farm and did research and published scientific papers. And I said, let me give another chance. So if I spent two years on MBA, I will spend one year on international trade. And I went and joined that, which was a mistake. So, from 1977, now we moved to 1983, years have passed. So I said, no, this is not right. I must do MBA. And that's where analysis comes in. I really sat down and figured out why did I fail the last time? What did I do wrong? And corrected everything. Trust me, in 1980, before I filled up my papers or filled up my application, I knew that I will get admission. 
So I applied to I am Ahmedabad, I am Calcutta, XLR, and I got through all three. And I joined Ahmedabad. So it never happens to anyone. No one in the world has a smooth sailing. No one. You look at Winston Churchill, win the war, lose the election, then come back and eight years later win it again. Everybody. If there are no failures, there are no learnings. And my favorite example is Edison, Edison Thomas Alva Edison, who uh, invented light bulb. So he tried thousand different elements and they didn't work. So they said, you failed thousand times. He said, no. I know 1000 things which cannot be used to make a light bulb. So the next time I do something else. Another favorite saying of mine, history repeats itself because people repeat their mistakes. You cannot repeat the same action every day and expect a different result. Your actions have to change if you expect a different outcome. And it's as simple as that. That's where analysis comes in. That if you did not succeed, which happens to all of us, and we should be willing and happy to fail, because that's where we learn the most. What not to repeat next time. But if we repeat and then expect to succeed, it's not going to happen. And that's where analytical ability comes in, analysis comes in. Next one, focus. Now, a cricketer is a cricketer is a cricketer is a cricketer. Have you seen somebody who is a, a very successful dancer and a very successful cricketer and a very successful business person and a, uh, you know everything, it, it doesn't work like that. Yes, an individual is bigger than the role, an individual can do anything, but you have to choose one and that is critical. So you have to figure out early in life what you want to do, what will make you happy and then Focus, 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 and focus. And without that, nothing's going to happen. Last uh, points I've already mentioned are working with others. Uh, 1996, first time I migrated to United States. And uh, I, before that, uh, I was director of sales and marketing at Eli Lilly and Company, which I started here. And three years later, I came back here as managing director. So those three years, I was supposed to go and learn and be trained to become a managing director. So I went to Indianapolis and uh, my boss asked me, uh, so after a few weeks, so what have you learned? So what are you here for? As I am looking at uh, Sidney Taurell, Sidney Taurell was president, I knew him and he later on became, went to become chairman and CEO of uh, Lilly Worldwide. So I said, what have you learnt from him? I said, what I have learnt from him, that he is chairman of the company. He cannot manufacture medicines. He cannot discover a medicine. He cannot go out and sell a medicine. He cannot create an analytical process. He cannot, he doesn't even know what HR processes are. He can't do anything. Yet, he has to run a company. So he says, what have you learned? I said, all the control he has is on structure, processes and most important people. He has to get things done through others. And that will be the story of each one of us through all our life. And that goes back to the first point that if you want to relate to people, if you want to supervise people, if you want to lead people, if you want to work as a team member, it is critical that you relate to people and to relate to people it is critical that you be positive. I am going to stop here.